I recently decided to install a Hayward CL220 chlorine feeder on my pool pump. I had a salt pool um, with a chlorine generator. Um, I had it for about 20 years and it just kept breaking and I was spending so much money on it, I decided to go back to chlorine. First thing I did was put one of these guys in there. Um, and it sat in the pool and it floated, but I kept getting really close to producing algae. It was tough to be consistent. So I put this guy in place. There are great videos on YouTube that show you how to do the installation, but it's really simple. You just buy this unit and then it's got an inline side, which comes off the high pressure side of your filter. So you can see I've got a cartridge filter. The pump's right there. The pump pushes high pressure water into the filter so that it can be cleaned. And just before it gets there, some water comes off and runs to the inlet of the Hayward chlorinator. There's chlorine tablets in there. On the back side of it is another hose. So it runs into the same pipe where the filtered water right there is going into the pool. And so this just takes a little bit of pressure from the pump, runs it through the chlorine that you make, and then sends it into the water. The installation of the 220 is really simple compared to the CL200, which goes in the pipe. Because all you have to do is put this saddle valve on the leg that runs between your pump and your filter, and then another saddle valve on the leg that runs right into the pool. And it's just attached with these really simple fittings. And so you just drill two holes, put those saddle valves in place, and it's ready to go. Practically speaking, and what you might not see in another installation video, is that this thing is not very heavy. By itself, it's not really designed to just be freestanding. It has a plastic base, you can see down there, which is this black part, right? But it actually comes up out of that base. So it's not even attached to it, it's just its foot. And so when you try to unscrew the lid from the top of this filter, um, there's really no resistance at the bottom that's gonna hold you back. And so the whole thing just wants to spin in your hand. So I took two paving stones and I glued them together with construction adhesive. And then I used masonry screws here and on the other side in order to bolt that foot down to those mason blocks. So now I've got a solid base for it to sit on. And when I go to unscrew it, there's some resistance from about 30 pounds of concrete that's now attached to the bottom of the filter. The chlorinator's got a dial right there that you just adjust between its minimum and maximum settings. And that decides how much of the chlorine is going into the water and how much of it is staying behind in the tank. So you put the big slow dissolving chlorine tablets into this container and then they slowly break down over the week. If I pull it up out of its base, on the back is a little tab. That thing is like the child safety tab on the top of a prescription bottle, right? This whole black cap would just unscrew, except you have to press that in to get it started. You can see the little notches that it fits into. There, back in its base. So here's the point of the video. There's a bunch of warnings at the beginning of the instructions for this that nobody reads. I didn't read them. Just like there's warnings on your toothbrush package that says don't stick it in the back of your throat. You never really think about it, but these are important. What you're making here is chlorine tea. So I didn't realize compared to this thing, on the one hand, it's really great because the chlorine gas that it makes as the tablets are dissolving goes right out those holes in the top and blows away in the wind. The bad side is that the chlorine goes through like a roller coaster cycle. When you put the tablets in on the first day, it gets really high. And then by the time those tablets are nearly dissolved, the chlorine level is dropping. And so when it got really low, I could smell that my pool smelled a little bit like a lake and the chlorine wasn't enough, which is why I switched to this thing. That was terrific, except what I didn't realize is that this is now a chlorine tea. Inside this tank are partially dissolved tablets and a liquid that looks just like water, but is really highly concentrated chlorine. So the first time that I opened this thing up before I had attached the nice bricks to the bottom to hold it still, I was leaned over it. I had one hand on the body, one hand on the lid. I was cranking really hard to get it done. And when I open it up, a giant cloud of chlorine gas pops out the top. 
it's invisible, you don't even know it's in there, and it went right in my eyes and stung like crazy. Well, of course, my first reaction to that is to gasp, and so I breathed in the chlorine gas. So now it's in my eyes and it's in my throat, which is the reason I wanted to make this video, because just to show you how strong the chlorine tea is in there, that same week, I was wearing my sweet Converse Chuck Taylors. They used to all be this olive drab color, <laughs> but I dripped the condensate from the lid onto my shoe and it bleached my entire shoe. So really what you've got here is a jug full of bleach and all the bleach gas sitting right on the top of it. So be really careful when you open this thing. So I have developed a system now to make sure that I don't do what I did the first time. You may feel like I'm being overcautious, but once you've had chlorine gas in your eyes and in your throat, you don't want to have it happen again. So now I actually use my scuba mask because what I want is a seal around my eyes, not some safety glasses that are going to let the gas get in the sides. I want it to actually keep the gas off my face. And I use my Ryobi cordless blower so that when I open this thing up, I can hit it with the blower and disperse the chlorine gas to a concentration that's not going to bug me anymore. So the process is I come to the container, I push the switch, I unscrew the lid, I take a big breath, and then I open it. I blow away the chlorine gas with the blower, I drop in the tablets, and then I put the lid back on, hopefully without taking another breath. Because as soon as you drop the tablets in, you force the water level to rise and you make more chlorine gas belch out toward your face. I explained the process in advance because once we get started, I'm going to be holding my breath and I won't be able to talk anymore. So let's go. So you can see I wear gloves so as not to touch the chlorine tablets. It's a little chlorine juice that gets all over the chlorinator and I don't want that to break it down. And then I'm gonna show you the result after I start it up. By the way, there were no tablets left in there. So I put in about eight tablets last week. I have it set on about 50%. I'm gonna turn it down just a, down about a 12th. And I just filled it back up again with eight or nine tablets all the way to the top. So it's all running now, it's pumping in the chlorine, and it's all going well. But if you thought that the chlorine generator delivery system was going to save you time and energy, or even money, over the floater, I don't think that's the case. It's got a little danger associated with it. It's using chlorine tablets at least as fast as the floater did. And there was some expense and some installation to it. So I'm not disappointed that I did it but don't think that it's somehow easier than the blue floater. <laughs> 